Hey folks, in this video we'll dive into one of my top strategies to find the cheapest flights possible. I've used this strategy to book trips like flights to Japan for $413 round trip when tickets normally cost at least $800, last minute tickets to Mexico for $200 round trip when everybody else was paying $1,000 or more, and a same day ticket home from Paris for $150, even though same day tickets usually cost around $500. This strategy is simple and anyone can use it. You just have to use Google Flights and one other tool which we'll get into later in this video. Google Flights is hands down the best free tool out there for finding the best flight prices fast. You can easily search for flights to and from any airport in the world. And you get a nice two month calendar view which makes it easy as pie to look around for the cheapest flights out there. Why is pie easy anyway? It's great for looking at open-ended searches if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, but it also has the ability to filter searches down by useful factors such as airline or flight length if you do have an idea of what you're looking for. You can even set email alerts to be notified when prices drop on flights you want to book. There's no other free website out there with all of this in one place in a way that anybody can understand fast. Nothing's perfect though, and the downside to Google Flights is that it's not necessarily the best place to actually book your flights. Yes, you can book flights using Google Flights, but there's often better prices elsewhere. We'll get into how to book these better prices using a booking tool later, but first it's essential to understand the strategies you need to use Google Flights as your research tool for finding the best flights. There are a few different ways to search for your flights with Google Flights that depend on how flexible your travel plans are. The first way is good for when you don't know where you want to go, but you do know when you want to travel. So let's go ahead and pull up Google Flights. To get started, you want to put in the airport you'd like to depart from. If there are other nearby airports too, then it's good to add them to your search as well. Let's say we're departing from New York City, and we'll add Philadelphia as a second departure option since it's just an hour away on the train. And I'll take any excuse to grab a cheesesteak. Now we'll leave the where to box empty and we'll put in the dates that we want to fly on. Let's say I want to depart on January 12th and return on January 17th. After you've put in your dates, click Done, and then click Explore, and you'll get all the possible destinations for your search dates on this beautiful map. There are lots of filters to the left, so let's get started by setting those to filter down our search. You can decide how many stops you want. For this one, I'm okay with up to one layover, but I really don't want to deal with two. So I'll mark the one stop or fewer option. Then there's the price filter, which you can use to set your budget limit. I think for this trip I'm willing to spend up to $400, but let's see if there's not somewhere cool that we can go for less. And then I'm open to flying any old airline, so I won't set the airline filter. And as far as times go, I'm really not trying to wake up in the middle of the night, so let's set this filter to flights departing after 9am. There are a few other filters that you can mess around with too, but those are the main ones that I use a lot. I like the look of the price for these flights to Miami for $63 round trip. So let's check those out by clicking View Flights. Once the page loads, you can see exactly what the flight options are. And then you can set email alerts if you want to be notified of any price change. I'd actually consider booking these flights now. But since all flights departing from the US have free cancellation for the first 24 hours after they're booked, I'll set the email alert just in case they drop in price in the next 24 hours. Now the second way to search on Google Flights is good for when you do know where you want to go, but you don't know when you want to go there. Let's say we want to fly from Chicago this time and we want to go to Cancun. Since Milwaukee Airport is easy enough to get to from Chicago, I'll add the Chicago area airports and Milwaukee too. And then Cancun, Mexico will be my destination. There's also a new airport in Tulum I'd be willing to fly to, so I'll add that one in too as a destination. Since we're flexible with our dates, we can just click on the date and then start looking through the calendar for the cheapest dates in green. I think I want to stay about a week in Mexico, so I'll change it to 7 day trips in the bottom left part of the calendar window. I'm really flexible with my dates, so let's see. And I like the idea of traveling in January. The 17th to the 24th of January is really cheap, so let's select that and then click Done. And BAM! These are the cheapest flights. $161 round trip from Midway Airport. Hey, by the way, if you're liking this video so far, then why not give it a like? I'd really like that. But anyhow, let's get into the third way of finding the cheapest possible flights on Google Flights. This way is the ultimate way to find the absolute cheapest flights on Google Flights. But it requires the most flexibility because it's for when you don't know where you want to travel to or when you want to travel there. So for this one, let's start over on the Google Flights homepage. Once at the homepage, scroll down to the map and click on it. Once we click on the map, it will take us to another giant map with empty search boxes. Google calls this Explore. So let's give those Angelinos some love and search for flights from LAX. 
And we can add in Burbank, Long Beach, and Santa Ana because those airports are also easy to get to. Since we don't know when or where we're going, this departure city is the only factor we know already. You've still got all the same search filters from before, so let's just set the budget at $500 and see what happens. Then where the dates would be? Right now it says one week trip in the next six months. Let's click there and you can change it to a specific month, a weekend, or a two week trip. So let's make this a two week trip. And wow, Hawaii for $197 round trip sounds good, so let's go with that. And then the fourth and final way of finding the cheapest flights on Google Flights also happens to be the least flexible. This means you know where you want to go and when you want to go there. Even though this can seem like a straightforward search, Google Flights can still help you find the cheapest flights here by showing you all the airlines offering your flight options in one place. Let's say we want to book flights from Austin, Texas to New York departing on February 16th and returning on February 18th. We're just visiting for the weekend and we'd like to leave Friday afternoon and return on Sunday evening. So let's put that in the filters. And voila, the cheapest flights are on United again. That was quick. But now that we've gone through the four ways to use Google Flights to find the cheapest possible flights, let's look at how to actually book them. Since we can think of Google Flights as the research tool, the other tool that we can use to actually book these great prices is going to be the booking tool. The booking tool is either the airline's own website or a third-party website. Let me explain. Usually, the best place to book the cheap flights that you find on Google Flights is the airline's own website. This is because booking directly with the airline means you'll get service from that airline and won't have to deal with third-party websites that may be hard or even impossible to get in touch with. Most of the time, this doesn't matter. But when there's a delay or cancellation, it's always easiest to sort everything out if you've booked your ticket directly with the airline. On top of that, you'll often find that the lowest price you can actually book can only be found on the airline's own website anyway. Even if it's not the lowest possible price, there's often such a small price difference that it's not even worth the hassle of not booking directly with the airline. But that's only usually the case. Occasionally, it won't be possible to book a low fare that you find on Google Flights directly on the airline's website. When this is the case, then it's time to head to that third-party website that I mentioned. But what is a third-party website, you ask? This might sound like a fancy word, but it just means any other flight booking website besides the airline's own website. Not all of these websites are the same, though. And I usually use Kayak because it's quick to use and most often has that best flight price that I'm looking for. Momondo and Skyscanner can be okay options, too. But outside of cases where the low price you find on Google Flights can't be booked directly with the airline, it's better to save your time and book direct. So now let's take those flights that we did research for earlier and see if we can actually book them. In the search where we knew when we wanted to travel but not where, Google shows the lowest price as $57 round trip when clicking all the way through. But I don't want to deal with lucky to go, not when the price difference is only $6. I've booked with many different third-party sites, and most of the time it has been hassle-free. But there were a handful of times when I needed to deal with some kind of change in my booking, and that always led to a ton of wasted time trying to even get in touch with somebody. This really just depends on how much you value your time, since in the end it's impossible to know if there's going to be some kind of change in the booking or not. So let's go straight to Spirit's website and see if we can get it for the original $63 round trip. And sure enough, we can book it there for just under $63. Moving on to the search where we knew where we wanted to go but not when, we've got our $161 flights from Midway, but where should we book them? The cheapest price is on the Frontier website in this case, and it's just under $161 round trip. But how about our search without knowing where to go or when to go there? We ended up deciding on United Flights to Hawaii, and Google said they start at $197 round trip. These are basic economies, so do keep that in mind. And Google Flight says it's cheapest to just book directly with United. Let's head to United and try. And sure enough, it looks like we can book these flights exactly for $197 round trip directly on United's website. That's pretty cheap for Honolulu. For our final example where we knew where we wanted to go and when we wanted to go there, Google showed $178 round trip for the flights from Austin to New York. So let's check again on United's website. And sure enough, United has the exact same price. So let's book them directly with the airline and avoid any potential hassle. You could also search on Kayak, but Kayak has the exact same price too. This is just one of a bunch of different travel tricks I want to share with y'all. I often use other techniques to book amazing deals on flights too. So if you found this video helpful, then subscribe to my channel because I've got plenty other videos to help you travel better. And if this video inspired you to book some flights, then definitely drop a comment below and let us know about the flights you booked. Thank you for watching and I'll see y'all real soon.